Welcome everyone to part two of Couch Potato Diary. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in today. If you're looking for the more traditional stick and ball sports, those are on part one. Part two, it's all about a fighting Friday as we look at the UFC, the WWE, and the world of professional boxing with two major shows, or two major fights, sorry, coming up this weekend. So let's get right into it and talk UFC 303. <laughs> So, UFC 303 has been turned upside down. Now, it will be um, Pereira against Prohashka for the light heavyweight championship at UFC 303, saving the event after Conor McGregor had to pull out with an injury uh, in his bout with Michael Chandler. And we were saying for a little bit that all of it felt a little fishy around this main event, and now we know what was going on. It's that Conor McGregor was out with an injury. They are working to reschedule this bout for sometime in August or September. Um, I, my initial reaction is to be really hard on McGregor about all of this, but like injuries happen. So it like, it's just, it just sucks, right? Like I, I have said before, I'm over it with the whole Conor McGregor thing. I think when you are postponing events and you have an event that has the biggest gate in the history of your industry, um, you need to be a bit more forthright with, with what is going on. Um, and so I think to keep the McGregor news silent for as long as they did it was a little bit frustrating, but I can also understand it. Like, this is a time where I think we have to more applaud the UFC for getting a card out there than shit on them for how all of this went down. A little bit more transparency would be great, but a little bit more transparency with the Ultimate Fighting Championship is what we have been clamoring for for over a decade now, multiple decades now, I guess. Yeah, 10 years ago is 2014. We were well into wishing for more transparency in 2014. So, um, overall, it was just a lose-lose-lose situation. It's not McGregor holding him up for more money or anything like that. Um, it, it is just an unfortunate injury situation. So, we will see. I'm still favoring Chandler if that fight eventually does happen in August or September. It sucks for Chandler because we are kind of at the tail end of his peak and it's just been dragged on and on and on. For Prohachka, it is another opportunity now to raise his... Um, raise his profile. I, I think he, uh, he beats um, Prohachka. It's an interesting fight. Prohachka has worked his way into this opportunity, um, but... I, I, I do think that this is a chance for Pereira to, uh, once again, on one of the sport's biggest stages, which it, it's not going to be anymore. UFC 303 is just going to be another event instead of uh, UFC 300, like he was on before. International Fight Week, I don't think carries that. It, it's more um, cursed than anything, it seems, at this point. But it, it's still a big stage for him to, to get another big win on and continue that push to get this guy a heavyweight title shot. I, I, like I said, I would have given him a heavyweight fight at 301, uh, coming off of his win at UFC 300, and it would have been amazing if they could have done a heavyweight title fight, but John Jones wasn't going to take this bout on that short of notice, and Tom Aspinall has the biggest fight of his career coming up against Curtis Blades back in England, so you can understand them not necessarily messing with that. Uh, co -main, co main event also had to be changed as Brian Ortega moves into that one to face Diego Lopez, who fought on a card a couple uh, a cards ago. I believe that was a Brazil one and looked like a world beater. So that's a really interesting fight. Also, Hamzat Shemaev is out of uh, his bout uh, in Saudi Arabia. So basically, uh, I'm not going to say a tune-up fight for Robert Whitaker because that's not the case, but the UFC has had some scrambling to do over the last couple of weeks. And it is a difficult situation, especially... After you loaded up UFC 300, and um, it you just you don't have the replacements around to to be able to to help out, and this card wasn't loaded anyway, so it, it is a bit of a bummer that is for sure. But that's enough about fights that aren't happening. Let's get to the stuff that is happening first. Let's start with a fight preview, getting ready for the boxing this weekend. It is a big boxing weekend as Tank Davis is back. He will be taking on Frank Martin under on the undercard. Sorry, uh, it will be David Benavidez going up against Alexander Gvozdik. Um, apologies for the, the horrible pronunciation. So let's get into that one. David Benavidez is undefeated at 28 and 0. He is the interim WBC super middleweight champion, and everyone has been clamoring for him to face Canelo Alvarez as Benavidez um, is born in. 
uh, Phoenix, Arizona, as uh, he gets ready for his bout this weekend. Um, he is facing Demetrius Andrade. Um, an interesting fight in um, in this one here against, again, apologies for the pronunciation, Gvodzdik. Um, Benavidez, I, I think, is a, a clear, 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 clear favorite in this particular bout. Um, again, 28 and 0, 24 wins by knockout, 4 by decision. Coming off of the win over Andrade, the biggest win of his career probably in 2023 when he picked up a unanimous decision win over Caleb Plant. He feels like he is kind of the, the next one at 27 years old, uh, born to a Mexican father and an Ecuadorian mother. Uh, again, this is, I don't want to say a stay busy fight for him, but this is not the fight that he wants. He wants to be facing Canelo Alvarez. Standing in his way is, well, Canelo Alvarez not wanting to fight him, and Oleksandr Gvozdik, who is 37 years old. Um, coming in with a record of 20 and 1, 16 wins by knockout. He has been knocked out once. That was against Artur Beterbiev back in 2019. Um, had four years off in between then and is now uh, stepping back in for his third fight. He's coming off of back to back wins. Um, sorry, back to back knockout wins and a unanimous decision win in his three fights since that loss back in 2019. Um, the, in that fight in 2019, Kvazdik was hospitalized as he said he felt a pain in the back of his head. It was a uh, fear that there was some brain bleeding going on. Um, the test revealed that it was just a, a mild concussion and uh, he was able to come back, uh, but he had retired and has now come out of retirement for the, this gigantic fight. And so for Kvazdik, um, the, the task is clear and that is to try to upset the Apple cart, be the banana, uh, banana peel for David Benavidez to slip on. Benavidez, like, there isn't a whole lot. It, honestly, in either of these fights, Benavidez is the better fighter, um, and he has been on some kind of a roll right now to get him into this opportunity. Um, Gvozdik, I mean, look, like, he he went out and fought Beterbiev, one of the best fighters in the world, and came up short. That That's not that's nothing to, to scoff at. He had earned that opportunity by winning 17 fights in a row, including against the Donna Stevenson in Montreal in 2018. So shout out Canadian fights. Um, but he's just not on the level of a David Benavidez right now. So I, I would imagine David Benavidez picks up the win and I will say he probably gets the knockout in this fight. So we'll go Benavidez by knockout. Uh, then in the main event, it is Gervonta Tank Davis taking on Frank Martin. It's been a minute since we have seen Tank Davis in the uh, squared circle because after his 29th victory in 29 bouts over Ryan Garcia on June 1st, 2023, Davis was taken into custody for violating the terms of his home detention and sentenced to serve the remainder of his sentence in jail. So uh, 44 days later, he completed the confinement portion of his sentence and was released from a Baltimore jail. So he has been uh, dealing with some stuff in the last little while. Um, there is also a domestic violence um, accusation. Um, charges were eventually dropped, but the, the trouble with the law um, is not something that has been overly unique to Gervonta in his career. Um, and so I, I didn't necessarily address all of that when we did the, the early storylines. So apologies for just glancing over some serious stuff going on in, in this man's life. And so it feels very callous to say like, okay, so how much of a distraction is prison? But, um, or sorry, jail, but th this is someone who has gone through a lot in his life. And when, um, when you hear him talk this week, it sounds like this is a different guy coming into this bout. And I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm making excuses for him or anything like that. Uh, we are strictly talking from a boxing perspective. It sounds like there is a different approach to the sport now coming off of that. And I think there's also a frustration um, after he beat Ryan Garcia and beat him handily. Ryan Garcia gets his big win and no one is really focusing on on Tank anymore. It's all been Garcia, Garcia, Garcia. And I think casuals have kind of pushed Tank to the background. People who cover this still have Tank in the pound-for-pound the pound running right now. I think Tank needs a big reminder of who he is. 27 wins by knockout. I think we get a 28th as he goes up against Frank Martin, undefeated, a 29-year-old fighter out of Michigan. He won Golden Gloves back in Salt Lake City in 2016. This is obviously the biggest bout of his career. Um, he doesn't have a 
official title on the resume. Um, he has fought former title challengers before, but Javante Davis should go in here and light this poor dude up. And I, I do expect that that is what happens coming up here this weekend. So not the most compelling of bouts, to be sure, after we have had a long line of big fighter against big fighter, big fighter against big fighter, big fighter against big fighter. This is kind of a throwback to, well, this guy's so much better, but he needs a fight and he's going to face this guy. And we'll see if something... Wild and crazy can happen. Um, just looking at the odds right now, or at least trying to, all these sites are always a little all over the place to try to find some things. Um, but looking at the odds, because both fights to be finished, I, I think could be uh, a little bit interesting for us here coming up this weekend. Um, and definitely something that I should have looked at before. Here we go. Javonta Davis against Martin. Davis is a minus 714 favorite. Good lord. Uh, same thing with Benavidez. So, let's go... Oh, we don't have any prop bets for this yet. Wonderful. That's gambling on the sport of boxing in 2024. Uh, so we'll see if anything to finish pops up. Uh, we, we will see if we'll be able to get something on Davis there. Uh, but just quickly, can we get, like, just... It's uh, very much a uh, square play, but can we go, let's go Davis, and let's go Benavidez, uh, and let's parlay that together. That's still only minus 334. Uh, the juice not worth the squeeze on that one, ladies and gentlemen. The juice is certainly not worth the squeeze. So, um, either way, we're, we're going to see two of the best fighters in the world fight this weekend, uh, not against each other, and they're probably going to win in spectacular fashion. Let's move now to the world of professional wrestling, as they have another big show this weekend in the WWE. It is WWE Clash at the Castle in Scotland coming up in just a few hours uh, from the OVO Hydro in Glasgow, Scotland. In the main event, it'll be Damian Priest defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Drew McIntyre. Overall, the build for this has been alright, and seeing some clips from SmackDown, it looks like we're going to get another crowd that is absolutely insane. So let's run this thing down. Bailey going up against Piper Niven for the excuse me, WWE Women's Championship. Piper Niven, uh, born in Kilburnie, Scotland. So a homecoming for her. A talent who I have liked for a very long time. Um, kind of getting introduced to the WWE in the Mae Young Challenge Classic. Um, either way, bring that back. That was cool. But um, she is, I think, a really unique performer and someone who is very, very interesting. She's not winning here. Um, that they are setting up for Bailey against Nia Jax. If you wanted to do a real underdog thing and Bailey against Nia against Piper Niven at SummerSlam, um, knock your socks off with it. But I, I just don't see Piper in a three-week build knocking off Bailey. I, I think this crowd is going to be, make a star out of Piper, and I think this is the big thing with Piper, with Alba Fire, and with Isla Dawn. These are all performers who probably wouldn't be in this spot if not for the birth certificate which is fine. WWE has gone the other way on that for a long time, and oh, think about the heat. Um, and so that has been incredibly frustrating at points. But I do think that it is now an opportunity to make these performers feel like big deals and capitalize on that. We will see, because they I think they've done a good job with Sami Zayn since Elimination Chamber last year. Got a little bit wobbly. Um or a couple of years ago, I guess. Uh, it got a little bit wobbly, but they got it back, and then when they were back in Montreal, made him feel like an even bigger star, and he has rode that momentum for a little bit here. Um, so I think that 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 is going to be key to coming out of this, because I don't see Piper Niven getting the winner. I think Bailey picks up a victory. Singles match for the Intercontinental Championship. It'll be Sami Zayn defending against Chad Gable. I think this is where we get the Otis reaction. Um, maybe not. Maybe they do it on Monday, because this crowd is going to be insane anyway. And so trying to capitalize on an insane reaction, on a show of insane reactions, might be a bit difficult to stand out. So I think we get a Sami Zayn win here, and it spins off into a Chad Gable versus Otis um, on Monday, when Otis eventually turns, Chad blaming the loss on Otis, and we, we get Otis hulking up, and he leads the charge uh, against Chad Gable. I think that's probably how it goes down. I quit match for the undisputed WWE Championship, Cody Rhodes taking on AJ Styles. The build for this has been exceptional. It has been really, really fun to, to see AJ in that light, and the way that they kind of used a natural storytelling thing of, look, you're going to have to go to the back of the line here because you just lost the championship. Like, okay, well, am I though? And instead of doing the retirement, kind of baiting Cody Rhodes into this, 
I don't think anyone is buying that Cody is losing this championship. Um, and that is, it's something that WWE is having a problem with right now is that like people love Cody. We love the whoa and all of that. Nothing feels threatening. He doesn't feel threatened at all. There doesn't feel like there is a challenge to his title at this point. SmackDown has been very blah. Um, and like no one believes that AJ Styles is going to, to win here and win the undisputed WWE Championship. We all believe that this is going to go to WrestleMania with something with either Roman or Rock or something. So, Or at least SummerSlam with these guys. So I would be surprised. If there was a change here, I think Cody does get the win. A uh, triple threat match for the Women's Tag Team Championships as Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill defend against Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Um, the, the champs retain in this one as well. I, I just don't see them having Bianca and Jade lose at this point, and there isn't a whole lot left to say about that. Then in the main event, intrigue abound as it is Damian Priest defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Drew McIntyre. Um... Everything is pointing to Drew being in the main event, and everything is pointing to it making so much sense to have Drew just win it. They had him basically as a babyface on Monday with the, the banger after banger with Sheamus and all of that. And it's in Scotland. They, I mean, look, we, we thought it was pointing towards Sami Zayn winning um, the, the the world, the, the Universal Championship, sorry, against Roman at Elimination Chamber. And we thought this about Drew McIntyre the last time there was a Clash of the Castle. So it could be wrong on this, but it, it's already, you're probably over on the night with Scottish talent winning. Um, and Drew McIntyre has been built up for this moment, it feels like, for a really long time. He has been great. He feels like a main eventer. Um, I wonder how that plays into things with a CM Punk story. I wonder how it plays into things with a Gunther story. I, I like, the, there's just a whole lot of different intrigue coming out of it. And also, I don't know if you've, like, it feels like we're just scratching the surface on a Damian Priest world title run, right? Like, it doesn't feel like we've really kicked it into gear. Now, part of that is him. Um, but, like, th this would be a monster win if he were to get that. He would feel like that main event guy. I wonder if there is some kind of if this starts a bit of a rift with the Judgment Day, I, I just I just don't see Drew McIntyre losing. I know we're all expecting CM Punk or something to, to throw off Drew McIntyre, um, <laughs> Joe Hendry. Um, I, I, I just don't see it really happening. I think McIntyre does get the win. Uh, all right, that is going to do it for uh, Fightin' Friday. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, if you want the Stick and Ball Sports, that is on um, the... Part one, sorry. And uh, we also have the Rider Happy Hour that is available wherever you're consuming this. Thank you guys so much. Um, it, it's been a long week, but you guys have been awesome following along with everything. Follow me on social media. I'm at Primetime Klein, and I'll talk to all you guys next week. I'm out.